Hi, welcome to Linda's Take. Today we are going to be looking at Ray Bridge Recruiting. This is the Excel SAM Project 1A from Module 3. I already have my instructions downloaded. I have my starter document here and I have already saved it by changing the 1 to a 2 in my file name. Make sure your name is showing up in your documentation and we are ready to get going with step one. And in step one, they want us to go to the sales worksheet and rename the sales worksheet as sales and dividends. So I'm gonna select the sales worksheet here, make sure it's my active cell. I can right click on it and rename, and I want it to be sales and dividends. If you misspell this, it will count it wrong and you will get everything else wrong in your document because the grader cannot find the worksheet to grade. So if you do everything and you submit it and it says zero of 100, go back, first thing to check, did you spell this correctly? Okay, we've got that step one done. Now we want to unfreeze column A. You'll notice as on column A, if we were to move across our worksheet here and keep going across, we could always see that column A. This is a great feature when you're working with large documents. You can freeze columns, you can freeze rows. We don't need that. So I'm just gonna move my mouse till it's that downward arrow over A, select the column up here in my view tab, come over here to where it says freeze panes and unfreeze panes. Now we want to middle, middle align the contents of the merge cell A1 to improve the appearance of our worksheet title. So here, don't just click here by the A1 because that's selecting that picture. So here, just click right next to that picture and you'll have that merge cell A1 there. Now we can come up to our home tab and here in our alignment, we can middle align the text. In cell B3, we want to insert the now function to display today's date. So make cell B3 your active cell. Up here in our formulas tab, here is our date and time options. We're going to scroll down to the now option. Click OK and it's gonna put in the date that you're creating your document. We want to fill the range C6 through G10 with formatting from the range B6 to B10 so everything is consistent. So the first thing we wanna do, we want the formatting from B6 to B10. So I'm gonna select B6 through B10, come up here on my Home tab, and I'm just gonna choose my Format Painter. And as soon as I do that, you can see my mouse changes. I get that little paintbrush on there. So now I can just select the range from G6 or C6 to G10. And everything's going to be formatted the same. Now we want to do some line spark lines. We want to show the sales trend for a position. The spark lines just give you a visual representation presentation of what your cells or what your numbers are doing over a period of time. So we're going to first tell Excel where we want our spark line to show, and that is H6. So I'm just going to put my insertion point, make H6 my active cell on the insert tab, scroll over to the line spark line option, and my date range that I want it to represent is B6 through G6, and I'm going to say OK. You can see I kind of see where the dip in the cells are at just by looking at one picture. We want our spark line to also go down to H10, but we want to make sure we copy it without formatting because we want to keep those banded rows there. So I'm going to come up here to my fill handle and I'm going to drag it down to B10, but then I have to come in over here to the autofill options box and I need to say fill without formatting. I want it to copy the information 
in H6 down, but I don't want it to change the formatting. So that keeps those banded rows there. I want to change the color of my spark line to dark purple text too. So up here with my spark line still selected, I have my spark line color. I want the dark purple text two option. Then I want it to show a high point and a low point. That just makes my spark lines easier to read and so you have just a visual representation of the trends of our data there in H6 through H10. Now we're ready for step seven. We want us to copy the formula in cell I6 and paste it down through I7 to I10. So I'm going to select I6, come up here and copy, then I'm going to select the range I7 down to I10 and then up here on the paste icon. The third one over in the first row is formulas and number formatting. So I'm going to select that and it's going to just paste the numbers and the formula but it's going to leave the banded rows there. You want to get rid of that little running bar there in I6. Just hit your escape key and it will go away. Moving on to number eight. We want to figure out the cells of each month, how they contributed to the total cells. So we're going to do some um, insert a formula in B13. First thing we need to do is hit the equal key to tell Excel we're entering a formula. And we want B10, so we're going to select the cells from B10, divided by the total cells, I10. Now we're going to be copying this formula over, so we want to make sure Excel knows that every time it sees I10, it wants to put I10 in the formula. It doesn't want to, does not want it to move over to J10 and K10, so forth and so on. So after I10, I'm going to hit on my keyboard the F4 key, and that's going to put those dollar signs in there after I10 to make that an absolute cell reference. So it's always going to refer back to I10. If you have a laptop, or using a keyboard that the function keys serve two functions, you might need to hit the function key and toggle the functions on and off. So uh, that's if you're using a laptop or a keyboard where your function keys serve two, two functions. Otherwise, you can just type in dollar sign $i$10. I'm going to enter that in. Then I'm going to copy and paste that formula using the fill handle down to G13. So now we need to calculate the dividends that are being earned each month. How much are they going to be paying in dividends? If the company earns more than 200000 in a month, the dividend is going to be 35% of the sales. But if they learn, earn less than 200000 dividend is only 27% of the sales. So we want to show that and be in the cell B17. So we're going to come down here to B17. We're going to use a formula called the if function. So we're going to come here to the logical under the formulas tab and choose if. So our test, we want it to look at B10. Those are our January cells. And look to see if they're greater than or equal to 200,000. Now if that's true, then they want to take the, the information in B10 and multiply that by 0 0.35. If it's false, they want to take the information in B10 and multiply that by 0 0.27. We're going to say OK. So our dividends for January, it's going to pay out 77000 We are going to copy this formula over to G17. So I'm going to take my fill handle here and just copy this over to G17 to determine all of our dividends paid January through June. We have some spark lines, some column spark lines here in H17 and 18. We want to change those to uh, spark lines. So we're going to come up here to the insert 
come up here to the Sparkline tab once we have those selected. And we can come over here. We can change the type to a spark line, and we want to apply a style to this particular star, spark line. We want it to be the dark gray spark line style dark number three. That is in the third column in the fifth row. We'll select that. So our trend lines are consistent. We want to increase the average number of placements per month. Because executive placements are most profitable, we want to know how many executive placements we need to reach the goal of 30 placements. So right here we have our total, our average placements. We want to use what's called a goal seek so we can determine how many executive placements do we need. So up here under our data tab, over here to the right, we have the What If Analysis grouping. We want to choose Goal Seek. We want to set cell I-27 to 30, but we want to do that by changing the information in cell I-23, the executive placements. We're going to say OK, and it's doing its thing we would need 35 executive placements to have our total average placements reach 30. So we know what goal we need to set for our executive placements. We have some text over here in J22, estimates only. We actually went that over this entire area from J22 to J27. So we're going to first merge and center J22 down to J27. Select that range up on the Home tab. Select Merge and Center. Then we want to rotate this text to minus 90. So we're going to come up here to our Orientation option. Come down to Format Cell Alignment. And we're going to take this little arrow right here and we're just going to drag it down to minus 90. Say OK. Then we want to change our width of column J to 6.0. So I'm just going to take my mouse up here between J and K, and then I'm going to drag it over to so I have width of 6.0. We have information down here in row 35 that we really don't need. So I'm going to put my mouse over the number at 35, and when it's an arrow pointing to the right, I'm going to select that. Then I'm going to right click, and then I'm going to delete to get rid of that information. Last thing we want to do for this assignment is insert a chart. We want a clustered column chart based on the non-adjacent ranges A22 through B26 and G22 through G26. So we're going to first select the range A22, A22 to B26. So I've got A22 here. I'm going to come down to B26, release my mouse, hold down the control key, then select the range G22 to G26. Now I'm ready to enter a clustered column. So I'm going to come up here to my insert tab, come over here to columns, and choose the first one, which is my clustered column. I want my chart title to be estimated cells July and December. So I'm going to click on the chart title, and I'm going to start typing. And you'll notice up here in my formula bar, you can see what you're typing in. And when I'm finished, I hit the Enter key, and it's going to put it down there in my title for my chart. I want to reposition my chart. So my upper left corner is an A35. So I'm going to move my mouse over my chart till it's a four-headed arrow. Then I'm going to click and drag it down here to this upper left-hand corner is an A35. Let go. I'm going to scroll down on my page to see the lower right corner and I want this to be equal to E49. So change the size of my chart. And then I want to change my chart layout to display the data values above the bars instead of below them. So up here on my chart design, I have a quick layout options. And I want to choose layout 2 just to make my information a little bit easier to read. So now I'm ready to save my assignment. You need to close Excel, go back to your Cengage, drag or drop the files here, or browse. 
to select the file, say open, and then I'm going to submit for a grade. And I'm going to view the graded summary report, open that up to see what my final grade was. I got 99 out of 100. In my sales and dividend worksheet, um, I got the high point selected, but I missed the low point. So to fix that, I am going to close this report, going to close this in Cengage. Going to come back and find my assignment that I worked on. Going to come back up here to these trend lines from A H5 to H10. Come up to Spark Line, and I need to select Low Point. You can see both the high and the lows. Save this file. Close my Excel worksheet. Get, come back to Cengage. Select that assignment. Hit Start, and you're going to find that document to submit again. I just opened this up in a different um, course, and so it, Sam has detected that I didn't download the start file from this course, so my instructor might look at that. So make sure that you are in the correct class when you're doing it. So here I've submitted my report, checking out my grade here, and I got 100 out of 100. Reach out to me if you have questions. Uh, you can send me uh, a message. I hope you've learned some new things in Excel from watching my videos. I hope I've been able to help you. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video here in Linda's Take. I do individual tutoring as well. So if you have questions about that for my rates and my times, reach out and let me know. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel and like my videos. Have a great day and I hope it is sunny wherever you are.